This is the shifted chessboard illusion, also known as the cafe wall illusion. All lines here are horizontal or vertical, but we, or at least I, don't see them that way at all. They're slanted somehow, kind of zigzagging from top to bottom. Today I'll teach you how to code this effect using vanilla JavaScript and HTML canvas. It's a beginner project, but I think it's surprising for anyone trying it. And if you stick till the end, I'll show you something cool, a way to negate it so the illusion doesn't happen anymore. Folding with Radu. Let's code now. We begin with Visual Studio Code open in an empty folder and create our file index.html. All the code today will go in this file. Here we define a canvas element and we give it an ID of my canvas, a width of 900 pixels, a height of 600 pixels, and let's give it a background color of blue like so. Let's open this file in a web browser. I'm going to use Google Chrome. And it should look like this. But I would like to place it in the middle of the screen here. So let's modify this style a little bit. And add a position absolute, a top of 50% and a left of 50%. Save, refresh, and now the top left corner is in the center screen, so we also need to translate this rectangle half its width towards the left and half its width towards the top. We do that using transform translate minus 50% minus 50%. Refresh, and the canvas is in the center screen. Now we're going to start writing some JavaScript code. So I'm going to go here below and begin a script tag. Let's close it so that we don't forget to do it later. And in it, we're going to access our canvas context. I'm going to call it CTX. And it's going to be the 2D context of the my canvas element. We'll use this to draw on the canvas. And we're going to be drawing some simple squares. And I will set some properties here, like the fill style is going to be white. The stroke style is going to be gray. And the line width is going to be two pixels. To draw a square, we begin path and use the rect method of the canvas context which accepts four parameters, an X, a Y, and a width and a height. And because we're drawing squares, both of these are going to be equal to the same thing. I'm going to write here size, size. So let's say X is going to be 300, Y is going to be 200, and size is going to be 50. Now, to see something, we will also need to fill our shape. This is going to make it with a white fill and stroke our shape. This is going to give it the gray outline. Let's save this, go to our browser, refresh, and there is our square. 300 pixels on the X, 200 pixels on the Y, 0, 0 is in this top left corner, and the size is 50 pixels. Now we're going to be drawing a lot of these squares, so we will extract this as a function. And I'm going to call it draw square, and it will take parameters the x, y, and size. That means we won't need this line here anymore, and I'm going to indent everything to the right, like so. Now we can call this function by typing here draw square and giving some properties for x, y, and size. Let's give some different ones this time, maybe 200 for the x, 300 y, 100 size. Save, go to the browser, refresh, and here's our new square. Next, we'll use this function to draw many squares of the same size. 
So let's begin by defining a size, maybe 50 pixels. And now I'm going to loop horizontally and draw many squares in a row. So I'm going to start with X at zero and I'm going to go all the way to the right. So until it's canvas width and I will increase X by the size at each iteration. Now here, I'm going to replace 200 with X and 100 with this size parameter that we defined earlier. Close this, save, and in the browser, refresh the page, and we get a line of squares like this. Let's make their style alternate. I'm going to make a black one and a white one and a black one and a white one and so on. To do that, I'm going to go here and write an if statement. If x divided by the size, so this is going to be now 0 for x is 0, but then x becomes size, so x divided by the size is 1. Then x is 2 size, so x divided by size will be 2, 3, 4, and so on. Now I only want the even indices to be black. So we check what remains when we divide by 2, and if it's 0, then we're going to set the fill style to black. Otherwise, we're going to set the fill style to white, like so. And we actually don't need this fill style here anymore since we're setting it now below. Let's save this, and in the browser, refresh, and you can see now the colors alternate. Let's make them now cover the whole screen. So we're going to loop for Y as well. And in the code here, we will put everything inside another for loop for Y is at zero going until the canvas height this time, also increasing by the size. And everything here goes inside this for loop. We need to change this hard coded 300 into Y save, refresh, and we get this. But it would be more interesting if we offset some of these rows to the left by one unit, making a checkered pattern. Let's see how to do that. I'm going to define here an offset. It's going to be zero in the beginning. And every time I finish drawing one row, I'm going to change this offset. I will set the offset to be size minus the offset. And think about it. Offset is zero in the beginning, so when it changes, it will become size. Then in the next iteration, offset will be size minus size, so zero again. Then offset becomes size minus zero, so size again, zero size, zero size, and so on. We will use this offset here for the X and say minus the offset. So we translate this row to the left. Save, go to the browser and refresh to get our checkered pattern. And this is not an illusion, not just yet. For that, we need to offset the rows, not by one unit, but by half a unit. So here we just do size divided by two first and refresh. And there it is. I don't know about you, but I really see those horizontal lines zigzaggy now. Even though we know the coordinates are always horizontal, I still see them like that. And you can play around now with things, like um, maybe change the size of this. Does it work with larger size? I still see them a little bit slanted, but definitely not as much as before. How about you? Do you still see the illusion? You can also try a smaller size, maybe 30 here. And this definitely makes me feel weird. So uh, it does work on me at least. Let me know in the comments if the illusion works on you. And now I'm going to show you hopefully how to make it stop working. And it's an interesting thing. Not many people know. If you change the color here from black to something else, maybe I'm going to use cyan. Save the file, refresh, it doesn't work on me anymore. Even though it's the same thing, 
it just doesn't work. I see everything horizontal and vertical, normal stuff, as expected. How about you? Do you still see the illusion? Or is it normal now? This happens because the contrast is not as powerful now as it was previously. Try playing around with different colors and let me know which ones work for you and which ones don't. See you guys.